my third take because I keep going off to this side of the camera. Hey everybody, it's Mark Vogt with Votland Outdoors. And today it's hopefully a very brief explanation uh, uh, in answer to some comments and questions I'm getting from overseas. Uh, hey to my subscribers in Indonesia and hey to my subscribers in Iraq. Very, very cool to hear from you. One of them asked the question, how did you develop this method? Why did you develop this method, this, this shooting technique in the first place? And the answer is simple, guys. I wanted to develop a completely portable mechanism that any archer can learn and literally carry inside them so that they can pick up any bow, that they can pick up any arrow, and they can be successful at shooting accurately at some kind of a target between 10 meters and even all the way out to 80 meters. Now, why did I do that? Let me tell you a story. I'm 57 years old. I started the same way everybody else did. I started as a recurve archer that quickly evolved into a compound archer because I fell for the allure of how fast and how easy and how accurate you can be with a compound bow for a very, very little effort, very, very little technique. But after a few years of shooting, it started to really bug me. It started to bug me because every time I tried to pick up my recurve bow that I made in high school back in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, Hey, Detroit Lakes, I sucked. Even when I was shooting at 10 yards, I couldn't hardly hit the bag. In fact, what was most frustrating at it about it is that for most recurve shooting techniques that don't involve a sight, you're supposed to point your arrow off to the corner someplace, down low from the target, above the target, never actually on the target. And when, you've, you, when you're used to using a rifle, when you're used to using a compound bow that has a front sight, that has a rear sight, this is infuriating. On top of it, it's just flat out discouraging that you can't learn where that place is in space. So I started looking, I took my, my, my compound bow and I asked myself, well, what's a compound bow really got? And it's still Mark Vogt shooting. When I shoot a compound bow, I'm deadly accurate all the way out to 100 yards. When I pick up my recurve bow, I can't hit 10 meters. What gives? It's even the same arrows that I'm actually shooting. So it's not about the arrows, it's gotta be about the bow. What I found is that there's four things in a compound bow that make it brutally accurate even for a novice to shoot. It's got some mechanism in the front for being able to adjust the elevation of the arrow. It's got two alignment mechanisms, one in the rear, one in the front, that are over the top of the arrow so there's no misalignment between where you're looking and where the arrow is aiming. You're actually looking and aiming in the exact same direction and there's some kind of a smooth release. Those four pieces, precise uh, elevation control, uh, the ability to align the arrow from the rear and from the front directly at the target, and the ability to do a smooth release, if I could replicate those four things, I'd have a mechanism that I could actually shoot on a recurve bow. And I saw that Olympic archers already have a lot of this mechanism built into their Olympic archery bows. They have a mechanism for adjusting the elevation. They have a single adjustable pin that goes in the front that they follow back and forth. They anchor under their chin to form a virtual peep sight in the rear. They look over the left side, past the left side of the string and they look at that pin to put that pin directly on their target and to make their the release. And they have usually a, a really fairly high quality tab that they shoot from that gives them a smooth release. But what was bugging me about trying to adopt that technique for my bow, my hunting bow, was that I would have to bolt something on the bow. And I didn't want that. So what we're looking for is that we needed something to act as a front sight, something to act as a front pin that I could use together with the left side of the string to, to align over the top of the arrow. And one day it hit me. If I don't cut my arrows down to make them as short as possible, if I leave them at 30, 31, even 32 inches instead of cutting them down to 29, I have a mechanism where the tip of the arrow is what becomes my front pin. And suddenly I had it, a completely portable method that I use string walking. And we've seen other videos where you're changing the elevation of the arrow, not by moving the front of the bow back and forth, but by moving the rear back and forth using string walking and where you're going to anchor underneath your chin to get different elevations of the arrow. So there's the elevation. I get to use the Olympic archer's rear peep sight, this virtual peep sight by anchoring under the chin and looking down the string gives me my rear pin. I get to use the tip of the arrow to form my front pin 
And if I anchor under my chin and release very smoothly like this, I get a smooth release. Those are the four parts that make compound archers really, really successful for very little effort. And what I found was you get the same four pieces, the same four components to be successful with a recurve bow and also with very little effort. That is so cool that all you have to do is pick your target, decide what your elevation is going to be, anchor underneath your chin, look down the left side of your string, put the tip of the arrow right on the target that you're aiming at and do a smooth release under your chin. What I was, I was amazed. I was as amazed as you guys might be when you see this method. When I finally developed it and, and uh, arrived at that little epiphany about the tip of the arrow and anchoring underneath the chin, the accuracy that I suddenly gained, I was super excited. And that's what brought me here today. I said, hey, I've got something I wanna share with a whole lot of people. Why? I see compound archers all the time finally come to the range with their very first compound bow and they make sure that nobody is around. They don't want anybody to see. And it's a sad experience because they're used to shooting at 30, at 40, at 50 meters. They've got pins just for all of those. They're used to plugging things inside a, a, a space like this. And then they start shooting a recurve bow with no sights on it for the very first time. More power to them for trying, but suddenly, thoop, 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 thoop. In fact, there's a guy out there in England that makes bear bows. I'm gonna try to help him out because he, he was a brave soul that about a year ago, maybe two years ago, he posted a video where he said, I've always been shooting up at an angle with all of my war bows that I create. I've never aimed at a target. So then he has, a, he has a, a video out there called the most humiliating experience of his life where he goes and aims his own bows and he makes gorgeous bows. He's a great boyer and a great teacher of self bow making. Uh, I'll watch for his uh, link. I'm going to put it on this post. But when he shot, he must have gone through 6, 12, 18. I think he shot 24 arrows at a target that was only 30 meters away. And most of the time, he didn't even come remotely close to the target. But I can teach him this technique, and we're going to find out. We're going to see if he wants to go make another video. Same bow, same arrow, same coat that he's going to aim at. We're going to watch and see what happens. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little bit about why I'm doing all of this. It's so that I can have a portable technique, but that portable technique is so easy to teach that I'm here trying to teach you guys so that you have it portable as well and you can go shoot. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll see you out there.